Here we go. Let's make it a good day. We do it our own way. Let's make it a good day. Oh, no matter what they say. Oh, yeah. Good morning, Blue Earth. Good morning, Osseo. Good morning, Bellevue, Washington. And good morning to you. Welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. Thank you for being here. Please say hello to my sidekick sister from another mister and Franny's Funeral Homes Employee of the Month, Kendall Mark. Hello. How's things going at Franny's? Well, busy as ever. Busy as ever. <laughs> busy as ever. Oh you look uh, very springy. You look very summery. We need it. Thank you. I feel very springy in this dress. Yeah. Well, That's you look fine. it. We all need it because uh, thank you, Leo, for that thank beautiful you. shot. Little applause there for Kendall's spring outfit. Yeah, there we go. Applause there. Oh, the applause button isn't working. Good. There we go. Does this have to do with the baby in a corner thing from yesterday? No, I, it's a real compliment. I know. It's a legit. You. No, we need it because of that darn rodent. Uh, the 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 Poxitani Phil. Phil. The uh, spoiler alert. But the rodent saw its shadow, I believe, so we get six more weeks of winter. Rude. But statistics tell us uh, that the rodent is only accurate 32 to like 38% of the time. There's so, an actual statistic for that? Yeah. So uh, coming up a little bit later, uh, around 1040, don't watch The View. Uh, they're just over there offending people. Keep it here because coming up at 1040, we have a far better, bigger, and more accurate Groundhog Day celebration, don't we, Kendall? We do. This this measuring stick is far more accurate than the rodent. Far more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, also listen to this. Congratulations to Minnesota Olympian John Schuster. Here he is uh, with me, sans facial hair. Uh, the reason we're showing John is a he's a great guy, and number two, it was just announced he will be carrying the flag in the Winter Olympics. <laughs> He was on our, that was, by, by the way, that was March of 2018, the only episode of our show that our director, Leo, paid attention to. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He just perked up. Right, Robert? It's only one. Now, Robert over here, he pays attention to all the shows. Mm -hmm. Leo, only, uh, only when we mention curling or anyone that has curled. Mm -hmm. And John Schuster, isn't he, he's like the, he's the grand poobah. He's the Mr. Miyagi. He's the he-man. Mm -hmm. He's a gold medal. Right. Curler. Right. Yeah, when the announcement came out, I was like, can someone please go check on Director Leo? He may have fainted. Yeah. I don't know. Because Director Leo, uh, you know, you know, you know little tidbits about all of our family. Leo, Director Leo is a man of few words, mm -hmm. few emotions. Yep. Uh, but all of that changes when you mention his beloved sport of curling. He gets very effusive. I know. Right, Kendall? He does. When we had our episode, we were talking about movies that make you cry. Yeah. Leo just said he watched a special on curling and he was, it made him tear up. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. That's his terms of endearment. It is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> That's Leo's. Give my daughter the puck! Or no, what's it called? The brick? The it, what's rock? it called? The rock. The stone. Stone? No. It's called the stone. Rock, stone. Jeff said, Jeff said it was Broom? called the rock. No, it's the stone. Oh, you didn't know either. I didn't. That's why I, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know either. Sorry. You didn't either. I don't Sporty curl. Spice. I've never gone curling. You never have? I have twice, and I fell both times. Well, I hear it's, it's that lunge position. Looks very difficult. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm too old to lunge. <laughs> Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it there. <laughs> My little curling champion. Oh, Caesar's Palace. They're moving on from Adele's residency. They're like, okay, girl, bye. Uh, and it sounds like it's uh, probably going to be over for good. According to page six, all production elements have been removed from the Coliseum Theater. This is the promotional. This is what they call the key art. Insiders say there has been no activity related. Hi. That looks like a Kendall pose after a winery tour. Anyway. I think it is. That's where she got that. <laughs> That's a, that's a Kendall selfie after a winery tour. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no activity related uh, to addressing the concerns that led to the cancellation in the first place. Adele could be 
picked up by another casino like Planet Hollywood or Resorts World, but it's unlikely that Caesars uh, would uh, commit to her again. Insiders also say Adele is having troubles with her boyfriend. People are saying they're, they're blaming the boyfriend. Mm -hmm. You know how like sports stars like Tony Romo. Mm -hmm. Remember when people blame Jessica Simpson? Yes. Oh God, did I just make an accurate sports reference? Mm -hmm. I was impressed. I, I mean, it was Jessica point. Simpson and Tony Romo. I still get the point. I still, still get the point. You do. But um, no, they're blaming the boyfriend. And Caesars is going to be out a lot of money. Mm -hmm. A lot of money. And I got, I, 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 I'm just going to say, and I like her a lot. I'm a big fan. This is going to be a little bit of a stain on her on her reputation for a while. Mm -hmm. The rumors in a lot of those articles were that, yeah, she was upset a lot of the rehearsals on the phone, upset with said boyfriend, and that she had done rehearsals in LA, and so when she got to Vegas, she wasn't happy. It just kind of seems like a lot of chaos and a lot of upsetness that's probably never gonna get fixed. I'll say it again, I, 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 I understand and I don't begrudge her for creative differences right. and creative disagreements. But it's just highly unusual to cancel a show that large, like three hours basically before the first one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next in the dish, Seth Meyers celebrated 40 years of late night on NBC. Not him, but the show late night. And he welcomed the original host of the show, uh, David Letterman. He talked about getting started after uh, Dave's failed morning show. Look at this. Because we had blown up the NBC daytime schedule a year right. previously. I, uh, we had a show, a lot of us had a show that we thought was just great. And it was on for 90 minutes live, like 9 to 10.30 on, on NBC. And it replaced two or three uh, game shows. And it, it turned out uh, America didn't want them replaced. <laughs> Cer certainly didn't want them replaced by me. We were on the air for, I don't know, maybe six weeks. That's it for the morning show. That's it. I have six weeks, um, maybe maybe two months. I don't know. And then I had to go to the end of the line. And how long did you wait at the end of the line before late night happened? Not too long. Well, speak for yourself. <laughs> uh, it, it seemed like uh, an eternity because in show business, uh, if, if you screw something up like blowing up a network's daytime schedule, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Uh, you, you know, it could be a while before they call your number again. Yeah. Well, they did call his number because of Johnny Carson. You know, Johnny Carson, uh, back in those days, youngins, you have no concept of this, but TV stations kind of went off the air after a certain point. They put up a bald eagle uh, in slow motion and a waving flag and a bunch of people looking very sad uh, and, and a montage. And then you went, you cut the, you know, the Star Spangled Banner and then they cut to black and then it was like... <laughs> <laughs> and they were static. Dave's show came on because uh, Johnny got control of that. He got uh, the, the rights to that next hour. And he loved Letterman. And he wanted to give Dave another chance. So because he had a Carson stamp of approval, therefore he had NBC stamp of approval. I didn't know that. Yeah. So it was really, it was really Carson that helped because uh, he loved Dave. He really, really loved Dave. Seth also asked about one of Dave's most well-known characters, his mom. Look. One of the, that I first remember about your show, your mom became a, a player on your show. How did you first think that she would be a fun character to bring on television? Well, first of all, this is exciting because in her life, in my life, no one has ever described my mom as a player. So <laughs> thank you for that. That's great. <laughs> um, I was driving to work one day in the old days and Howard Stern was talking to his mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, I kind of put the pieces together and thought, I have a mother. <laughs> and, and it was because of Howard, then we started putting my mother uh, on the show. And God bless her, she lived to be almost 94. Wow. Yeah, it was amazing. And, <laughs> and as people say sometimes, good for her, she uh, died, uh, died doing what she loved, uh, sleeping. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> My favorite bit of uh, with Letterman's mom, other than when she was sent to the Olympics in 94 and hung out with Hillary Clinton, which is still hysterical, is the Thanksgiving tradition of Dave guessing the pies. It was so ridiculous, so stupid, but they would go live to Dorothy's kitchen in Indianapolis and Dorothy had three pies in front of her. 
and Dave would have to guess which pies she made. David? <laughs> no. Is it blueberry? No, David. It was hysterical. So it's great. simple, but so funny. Coming up a little bit later, don't miss it. If you need a laugh, uh, Letterman also went to YouTube. The, his library went to YouTube. We're going to show you some uh, funny clips. It'll put you in a good mood. But next, the folks at ABC were not satisfied with Whoopi Goldberg's explanation slash apology. The network has suspended Whoopi for two weeks. This comes, and we told you about this yesterday, after she made comments about race and the Holocaust. She went on the late show on CBS and tried to clarify the comments. Uh, her remarks, but that wasn't good enough. I think it actually made it worse. According to the New York Post, her co-hosts have her back and are furious that she was suspended. I will say this. We, this is why we don't often wade into controversial waters. We try to keep it light. I'm not going to get on this show and uh, uh, mur, 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 about a topic that is very nuanced and needs and has a lot of layers. Um, I, I don't think it's as cut and dry. Um, but I will say this, I think Whoopi made the mistake with her apology, her non-apology. I think the Colbert appearance did her no favors. She kind of doubled down almost, and it wasn't a real apology, and I think the executives had to do something because you, there are consequences. Um, but I went back, I went back and I looked, I, I Googled Whoopi and uh, the Jewish community. She's been on The View many times as, a, as an ally of The View, I only say that because you got to look at the totality of a person in situations like this. If she had had a record of sustained um, negative comments about the Jewish community and then she did this, absolutely. But she's been a defender uh, 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 and a supporter of the community before. You got you to say this is a mistake, and, but she still has to pay for it. I don't know if two weeks, I don't know how I feel about that, so I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that. It's a much more nuanced conversation than you and I can have on this uh, show. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Back in a moment. We're not through with the hot dish. Coming up next. And just like that. Terrified and excited. The Sex and the City reboot is wrapping up its first season. But is it also going to be the only season? Our friend McCray from Big Brother is back with his take on the new season of Celeb Big Brother, plus a scoop on his new podcast. And forget the rodent, we have the real Groundhog Day celebration, and we believe way more accurate. That and more when we come back. One of the things you do a lot is ride in elevators, and since a lot of sports originated from real-life activities, there is no better sport for this building than, of course, elevator races. You are not allowed to ask anyone to hold the elevator for you. You must ride only on your assigned elevator, and you must be polite to all other passengers. David, the atmosphere down here is incredibly tense. Uh, I'd have to liken it to the scene at the 18th green of a Masters golf tournament. <laughs> History. Excuse me, just a minute. Speaking of history, Livingston, we fantastic. Apparently, we have a winner. Is this? Uh... Uh, okay. So good. So good. Like that's live television. That is fantastic. Welcome back. That's a clip. Seth Meyers showed from the original Late Night with David Letterman uh, when he was on NBC the very early years with his elevator races. That is incredible. Again, we'll have more uh, Dave in a minute. Girl. Girl. What? In that break, yeah. there's some breaking news. Are you ready? I'm not kidding. So Brian Stelter tweeted out. I love that this show is live. Brian Stelter tweeted, CNN President Jeff Zucker has resigned due to a consensual relationship with a colleague that was revealed during the investigation into Chris Cuomo. So CNN, as we all know, was investigating Chris Cuomo, who was the host of primetime, blah, blah, blah. We all know that. In that investigation, they found out that the bigwig, Jeff Zucker, uh -huh. was having a consensual, let's be very clear, relationship with a colleague. Uh -oh. So he has now resigned. And look, this is a, for the media world, Jeff Zucker uh, is a storied executive. 
Uh, he started out as a kind of wonder kid. He was the youngest executive producer ever for the Today Show. He was responsible for what I call the golden era with Murphy, Pervy, Matt Lauer, and Katie. Uh, and Alan Ann. He was the genius of where in the world was Matt Lauer. Um, and then he went on to be an executive at NBC. He was the one that was in charge of the, uh, he did the Supersize episodes. Remember that the Supersize Friends, um, he, did all, he did all of those moves. Now, he ended his tenure at NBC in not the best way. He was responsible for the debacle of the Conan O'Brien, Jay Leno, Jay Leno, Conan O'Brien, Tonight Show transition. And then he went to CNN and has had some uh, a lot of success there. This is big in the in the media world. It's like a king falling down. So yeah, you can't yeah, do that yeah. at work. No, 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 no. You can't do that at work. No. Next in the dish, one of the breakout primetime shows this year is ABC's Abbott Elementary. Kinta Brunson is the creator and star of the show, and she was on Kimmel last night and talked about working at the Apple Store before she got famous. Look. A woman uh, came to the store and she said, um, I, I need my iPad fixed. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, what's wrong with it? She's like, I the swipe isn't working. I said, all right. So I had to put my finger on it and the swipe is working. And she's like, no, it's not working for my dog. And I was like, <laughs> excuse me? <laughs> so she's just already just looking like Pepto-Bismol telling me <laughs> that she needs her swipe to work for her dog. And I said, I'm sorry, what are you talking about? And she's like, my dog's paw, her dog's in her bag, is not working on this iPad. <laughs> and I had to say a sentence I thought I would never have to say, uh, ma'am, this is meant for human hands. And that's when I was like, I gotta get out of here. Yep, that would be my sign. So if you guys don't know, this show, the producers were telling me, Kendall, this is the hot, like one of the hottest network shows. And I haven't said that sentence in a while. Abbott Elementary is a mockumentary sitcom that takes place in Philly, and it follows a group of dedicated teachers and a tone-deaf principal. The debut episode premiered to 2.7 million people. That's a lot. And since then, that episode has reached 7 million viewers, making it one of ABC's best-performing comedy debuts. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. no, no snark. Yeah. When was the last time the two of us on this broadcast talked about a broadcast show in glowing terms? I don't, I mean, I talk about this as us all the time. Yeah, I know you do, you but. You don't love it. No, I haven't watched network, except Fox 9. I haven't watched networks, you know, in a while. Right, I think this has a little bit of that um, modern family feel to it. I, and the office type thing with the mockumentary vibe. People just, we love that because you feel like oh. you're in on the joke the whole time and you need some humor these days. Yeah, well, and the, the guy that everyone should thank for that is uh, 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 Christopher Guest and Rob Reiner uh, with, with This Is Spinal Tap and Waiting for Guffman and Best in Show. Those are the best mockumentaries. Those are movies, but oh, you can't get much better than that. We eat soup. We still find things to not talk about. Anyway, uh, next in the dish, HBO Max is not uh, letting and just like that finish while uh, with just a finale. The streamer announced that the Sex of the City reboot's also going to get the documentary treatment, not mockumentary. Uh, here's a little clip from the trailer. Action. What? What? Oh, action. Yeah. Oh. Tomorrow we have the very first scenes in the show. Roll it! Even 23 years in. I'm excited. Terrified and excited. It's unbelievable. It's a big deal. I know, I'm panicked. I'm panicked. Charlotte has hot flashes. I want to start it with, I haven't had my period now for four months, so I think I'm finally in menopause. And Lily seeing and being like, wait, Mom, Charlotte, I'm here quick. You may not be as done as you think. <laughs> Sarah Jessica is so tactile. Action. When someone yells action, I just feel more whole. And just like that, the documentary will debut tomorrow, and that's the same time as the finale for the show. It will be an exclusive behind the scenes look at the making of the reboot. Just this morning, um, the official Instagram account for the show tweeted um, a picture and then a little caption that's referred to tomorrow's episode mm -hmm. as the final episode. Okay not the season finale. The final final. So I'm a little worried that this is in fact the final episode because I would like another season for them to get it right because I'm one of the few, I've actually enjoyed it. 
Look, I've rolled my eyes at more than a few scenes, but this last episode, they're getting their sea legs. They're getting, and I love the character of Seema, um, and I, I like where they're headed. I would be personally sad if they ended. I think they, they should get the opportunity to do a season two if they don't. But if I'm SJP at the same time, if I'm SJP and I'm Michael Patrick King who runs the show, I don't know if I would want to deal with doing a show like this in the era of social media because every day they wake up to a new headline of someone ripping their show apart. That gets exhausting, you know? Yeah, I think a lot of people who are, my sister Chloe is of a different generation than you, but she also said the exact same thing about this um, this exact show, that she was like, oh God, they're just doing so much, and that she's really liked it now and would love to see another season. So I think a lot of people yeah. feel that way. If you disliked it at the beginning, I get it. I didn't, capital L of it, come back and watch these last few episodes. It, it, it takes, I, for the 80th time, it takes shows a long time to find their footing. Mm -hmm even a reboot. Next in the dish, a Hollywood star is rushing to his celebrity wife's defense, who is the subject of body shaming. Ja uh, Jason Ritter, son of John Ritter, says the trolls can swan dive into the sun <laughs> after they mocked his wife for her weight. That's his wife right there, y'all know her. She's been in every, you know, there's a show that you've watched that she's been in it. Melanie Linsky is right now in Yellow Jackets and shot back at trolls over the weekend and said, the worst people are the ones who say they worry about her health. She previously revealed that she was even body shamed on the set of the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it, it, I gotta tell you, as someone, you and I, I'm not saying anything out of school. Mm -hmm. We've been very open about our own personal struggles with, with body image and, and weight. I've been very open about it. Um, it's like couching, it's like couching a, um, with, with all due respect, it's like couching something with that phrase. No it offense. Neg it negates everything that follows. Mm -hmm. So when you say to someone, okay, Joni, I'm, I'm worried about your health. Maybe a few less fish sticks. You know, it's, it's, we're, not, we're not listening to anything else but the last part. We don't, we, we don't care that you're worried about our health. We're really not when you say crap like that. Mm -hmm. But these monsters, these body shamers, mind your business. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 let, me, let me see you. Uh, why don't, why don't you. Show me a picture of you naked in front of a mirror. Let me, let me see how perfect your body is. Let me see your, your thighs. Mm -hmm. let me, let me, before you criticize this one. And one woman had the audacity to say that she shouldn't be in sex scenes in her own show because of the size that she's at. Oh, you mean a normal size? Mm -hmm. You mean normal, normal sized women uh, don't have sex? <gasps> oh, I... I that's a news flash to me. Right. I think women of all shapes and sizes have the nookie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um -hmm. I wouldn't know, believe me, for a myriad of reasons. Mm -hmm. But, okay. and I'm too much of a gentleman to even throw that question to you, but I'm just saying. I know, no. And but I, you've she, been body shamed. Yeah, and she said it so well. She goes, that's how people started. And then it's like, you have no idea. You've never seen me on my Peloton. You don't see me sprinting through the park with my kids. She's like, skinny doesn't equal healthy all the time. Nope. No, Hello. It just don't comment on people. Ugh. Anyway, okay, let's move on to something else before we take a break. It's time to meet our first JVIP. Today, it's Mashia Campbell. Hi, Mashia. She's beautiful. She loves watching the show because she says, I'm funny. Thanks, sweetie. And loves the chemistry between Kendall and I. Um, Mashia also appreciates that I wear my heart on my sleeve without shame. Yeah, I do that sometimes too much. For being one of our JV, for being our JVIP of the day, Mashia receives the coveted Jason Show mug. She's also entered to win the monthly grand prize that includes coming to the studio to watch the show, $150 accessories gift card to Becker Furniture World and a $200 gift card from Woodhouse Spa. We must say the in-studio experience will depend on the COVID situation at the time. Now, for you to sign up, bloop, head to fox9.com bloop slash JVIP. We'll be right back. Love you, Mashia. Welcome back. Well, our next guest is reality TV royalty. 
He was a finalist on season 15 of CBS's Big Brother. Now he loves spewing shade at the show and its contestants here to talk about the upcoming season. He celebrates the show too. Here to talk about the upcoming season of Celebrity Big Brother debuting tonight on another network, our good friend McCray Olson. Hi, buddy. Hey, how's it going? Good to see you again. Thanks, Holly. Thanks for having me. I, I mean, I let me be clear. It's nice zooming with you again. It'll be good to have you back in the studio when we can do it. Yes, yes, but safety is comes first. Yes, safety comes first. Let me ask you because uh, I, and I've asked a version of this every time uh, that you're here. But since tonight is the premiere, give me a Reader's Digest version, McCray. What is day one like for the contestants? Give, put me in your mind. Is it is it uh, haphazard? Is it nerve wracking? What it's, is that it's, like? It's basically the feeling of going back to school for the first time. It definitely uh, has those that feeling of like excitement. Um, you know, you don't know what to expect. There's a there's just a, you don't know who you're going to be in the house with. Um, it definitely is that feeling of going back to school. And, you know, I still have nightmares about going into the house. Like in my nightmares, they're like, you get to go back into the big brother house. And it's like the first day of school. It's terrifying. Is it because, you know, I always say you really never leave high school, you know, whether you're at a workplace or you're at a, there's always clicks. Do you go back to that McCray? Are you immediately sizing people up like, oh, the, the, there's the popular kids. Oh, those are the, those are the stone. You know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, obviously, I don't fit in with the popular kids. Um, I uh, so that's definitely been a part of my life, my whole life, I guess. Uh, but I feel like I'm pretty good at that. But that is definitely what goes into it: is you know, feeling out where you fit in with this group of people and how you relate to these people. Um, you know, but the good players, it shouldn't really matter too much. You should just go in there and you should, you know, get your bearings. But then you should be able to work each of those groups individually uh, to really, you know, like work your game plan. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, yes, we've all been there. So that is just a taste of how you, you'll probably feel going into it. Like I said, Celebrity Big Brother debuts tonight. You've seen the cast. You've had a, a, a time to kind of think it over. What do you think? Give me an overview. I mean, this cast is pretty, it's good, actually. I like this cast. It's an older cast, which we don't usually get on Big Brother. Uh, so that's going to be a little bit more refreshing uh, to see, you know, um, people that have gone through life and have, you know, like they're particular about stuff. So people are going to be, you know, fighting each other a little bit more, hopefully. Um, you know, Chris Kattan's in the house. That is insanity to me. Uh, I love it. That it, it makes me so happy. Uh, I love Chris Kattan. Who do you think is going to be kind of the difficult one? There's all, you know, there's not so much a villain, McCray, mm -hmm. but who do you think is going to be a little like prickly? So a lot of these people, they come from realms of TV world that I just don't understand necessarily. But I've heard some interesting things about Teddy Mellencamp. Um, I don't know, but I, I honestly am worried. I think that, uh, you know, you have a famous dad. That you're probably used to a certain kind of lifestyle and, uh, you know, not a bunch of people coming and doing whatever they want. It's a lot of egos, you know, that are just going to be clashing. So, I mean, I don't really care. I just want to see a train wreck. That's, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, I, I, I'll tell you because uh, Teddy, I do know because I watch Housewives. Okay. I'm not worried about her stirring trouble. I'm worried about her just being boring uh, because, oh. oh, it was like, okay. oh, on um, Housewives, it was like staring at a picture frame. It's just, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, so that's what I'm worried about with her. Okay, okay, yeah, then, uh, yeah, all right, well, that's not fun. I don't like that. That's no. annoying. Um, you know that, um, um, I tried, Todrick Hall, this person, he understands the show. He loves the show. He had a bunch of the previous cast live at his house for a couple months. He understands it. But uh, the thing that I'm most uh, excited about is that he keeps on saying, like, a boring season would be the ultimate tragedy. He's like, we just need to have good TV. We need to make it entertaining. Yeah. So I think that that's going to be in his head the whole time. So I think he's going to really just, you know, shake things up and make it fun to watch. Okay, so uh, entertaining, we've a uh, check, booring check. Who do you think is just going to be a darn good player? First I mean, impressions. I also think I think Todrick also will be in that kind of category because again, he's play or he's hung out with former alumni. He has um, the resource to talk to those people. Um, he knew he was going into the house, so I think that he probably just got as much information about how to play the game, how to play the game quickly um, from. 
prior house guests. And I think that he'll probably go in with the biggest base strategic you know, yeah. understanding Pace. of the game. Yeah, exactly. We have about a minute left. I want to give you the floor. Tell folks about, I love this, uh, your, your podcast, because it's with another friend of ours. Uh, tell the folks. Friend of the show, Janelle Pierzina, uh, queen of Big Brother. Uh, we are doing a podcast. We're recording it at her house. It's uh, It's been a blast so far. We're going to have uh, former alumni on. Uh, it's called Diary Room Open Mic. You can find it on YouTube. You can find it on all major podcast catchers. Uh, go listen to it. It's going to be just me and her shooting the old stuff you know we're gonna just be talking and uh having a good time and we're just gonna act like it's the diary room and just really lay it all out there i think it's great my friend thank you come back later in the season if you would please have me back and uh, thanks again for having me i really appreciate it see you soon mccray everybody follow him on twitter mccray chum celebrity big brother uh kicks off tonight on cbs and like mccray said you can find their podcast wherever you find your podcast we're gonna take a break coming up a little bit later you don't want to miss our Groundhog Day celebration. That and more later. At a, at toward the end of the segment, the, the beaver, the, they have long teeth. Famously. Because they're yeah. constantly eating wood, famously. That's right. <laughs> Without that, they'd be nothing. <laughs> and uh, the, the beaver uh, uh, punctured Jack right between the index finger and the thumb. And I'm told that that's a, a source of gushing blood. <laughs> and now the, the police hear that, that maybe, now this is a real violation because the police come over and they say, you know, there are, there are no beaver in New York, sir. <laughs> because they, they think they got, who knows what they got. And he said, no, 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 the beaver is mine. <laughs> and, and the police said, you're not allowed. It's illegal to have a beaver in New York City. Sure. Yeah. So he, he goes from being bitten by the beaver, mistaken as a gunshot victim, to arguing with the police <laughs> about what he is he doing with a beaver. And, and the, the, the whole time, the poor man lost like a quart of blood over the deal. That's why you need an animal guy. Yeah. Every talk show should have an animal guy. More Letterman on Seth Meyers staring, uh, sharing a story about Jack Hanna. It was the 40th anniversary of late night on NBC last night and it was good to see Dave return to the show that he created. Also last night Dave announced he launched a YouTube channel with old clips from his show because he owns the library. It was a smart deal that he made. Uh, he owns the entire library from late night on NBC over to CBS and the late show. Now this clip uh, we, we just pulled this one. This is probably not just one of my favorite Dave bits and I'm not trying to be Jason over dramatic. I personally think this is one of the best bits period in late night history. I really, really do. Here's Dave working the McDonald's drive through Medium Sprite. Relax, take a, take a couple of deep breaths and let's try it again. Let me have that order again, please. Sprite. Medium Sprite. That's it. That's all? Yes. You couldn't have gotten out of your car for a medium Sprite? No. Hi, how are you? Oh, I love those earrings. Thank you. Love You're it. the guy that's giving me a hard time about the Sprite? No, no. Hello? Yes, uh, give me uh, two number threes. Two number threes. And uh, that should be it then. You know, instead of two number threes, I'm just going to give you a number six. Is that all right? That's fine. All right, come on through. And you better have a smile on your face. No trouble, all right? Hello? Hi, can I have uh, two cheeseburgers and a small order of fries? You know, ma'am, we're really busy. Can I ask you to circle the lot one time? Can you just go around like once or twice till we kind of uh, collect ourselves here? If you don't mind, it would really help us out a lot. We're just up to our necks here. Who is this? None of your business. Just circle the lot and we'll pick you up the next time, all right? Just circle the lot. <laughs> that aired uh, November 26th, 1983. And what's <laughs> great about that uh, is the fact that he did a Taco Bell version on CBS uh, in 1993. Well, the channel uh, has interviews, it has segments, and of course, stupid pet tricks. Here's a little bit of uh, one of the stupid pet tricks. They also have a collection of uh, stupid human tricks as well, including the famous one from the CBS years with the woman from Chicago who can bug out her eyes. If you've ever seen, if you, if you ever Google, look at this dog, look at the dog, look at the dog right there. Way to go, beautiful. 
And my favorite, uh, and, and you guys have to watch this, is my, my favorite bit player on the, the show was Larry Bud Melman. Now, when he went over to a, a CBS, he had to call him by his real name, Calvert DeForest. And Larry Bud was just an awkward individual. Madeline Smithberg, our buddy, talks about him. And uh, Dave put Calvert or put Larry Budd at the, uh, the Port Authority uh, bus depot to welcome new citizens. And he gave everybody a hot towel. And the thing about the segment is the fact that he wasn't good with television. So he would keep talking to the big guests, but he would pull the mic away from him. He'd be like, so how do you feel being in New York City? And you couldn't hear him <laughs> and he kept doing it. And it kept cutting back to Dave. And Dave is in hysterics because that's live television. That's what you live for. <laughs> Those moments. And you just, you know, you have TV gold. So you can see it. I'm not going to watch anything else tonight. I'm just going to watch and they're going to be adding more and more and more. Right now, there's about 100 clips available. So good. I love you, Dave. We're going to take a break. A Groundhog Day celebration you don't want to miss when we return. Back in a moment. Welcome to America. Do you want to hear Oh, God, it is so good to see you. Uh, what are you doing for dinner? Uh, something else. It's been great seeing you, Needlehead. Take care. <laughs> Watch out for that first step. It's a doozy. <laughs> oh, a classic scene from a classic comedy. That's Groundhog Day starring Bill Murray. That movie came out 29 years ago this year. Oh, we'll be celebrating that anniversary next year. Well, welcome back to the show. In case you uh, haven't checked a calendar or Twitter today, it's Groundhog Day. That's right. Earlier this morning, America's favorite rodent, uh, Punxsutawney Phil, emerged from his stump to see, <laughs> to see if it saw a shadow. Well, folks, I'm not going to keep you in suspense. He did, which legend says means we're in for six more weeks of winter. Here in Minnesota, we automatically add six to that number. The annual event in Gobbler's Knob, Pennsylvania, <laughs> re <laughs> returned to an in-person event after going a virtual last year. Remember that? They, they literally they just had a Zoom meeting. They had to so fill, weird. they had fill like in a conference room and they just had them Creep his head up. Punch up out of a out of a Zoom box, and that was it. And then, oh, it's a, springs tomorrow. That's mm -hmm. what they did. Well, you may not realize it, but we have our very own version of Punxsutawney Phil here at the Fox 9 Broadcast Center. Earlier today, begrudging Brad, uh, <laughs> begrudging Brad, our Fox 9 engineer, uh, came out of uh, his tree trunk. Uh, to find out if he would see a shadow. Let's see what happened. Here we go. I did in fact see a shadow, which means six more weeks of the mass singer. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? Who is it? Condoleezza Rice? <laughs> Brad did see a shadow, though. We put him outside. Now, uh, this follows a long tradition here at the Jason Show. And when I say long tradition, I mean two years. Uh, last year, uh, photographer Eric stepped in in the role of the rodent. Here he is. Uh, last year, he emerged from his house. He was in lockdown uh, to look for a shadow. <laughs> I think this just speaks for itself. There he is, taking a little sip, looking down for a shadow. Doesn't see it walks back into his house where his wife is waiting for to waiting to yell at him right there yeah now you know we love a good blooper 
We did get an outtake of uh, of our little rodent Brad uh, going outside in the cold temperatures this morning. Here it is for your viewing pleasure. Hey, Mama. What are you doing? In a... Whoa. Just for accuracy's sake, that was not Brad. That oh. was yesterday's surprise ending. My favorite cat in the world. Oh, the cat that doesn't like snow. No, that, I laughed about that. <laughs> There's two things I laughed about yesterday all day long. Number one, the brawl at the Golden Corral in Pennsylvania <laughs> over steak. Now we don't have the rights, <laughs> we don't have the rights to show it to you because it's from another TV station. But there was a fight. Now, and, and, and don't email me the uh, oversensitive Sally's. Everybody's fine, so we, you know. But there was a fight that broke out last Friday night at a Golden Corral near, <laughs> near Pennsylvania. Now, right, right there, I could stop the story because that's hysterical. But Kendall, would you like to guess what the fight was about? I know, so I'm going to let you just go with it. <laughs> there was a shortage of steaks at the buffet. Uh, so the reporter. <laughs> The reporter, this is what I love about the, the occupation we're in. The reporter was so very serious and he's standing there and he's very serious and the anchors uh, toss to him. Uh, Jim is at the scene, Jim. There was a melee here at the Golden Corral in Pennsylvania and it was all over steak. Now right there is hysterical. And then in the middle of the package, the reporter says the following. He goes, and if you listen closely to the security footage, you can clearly hear a man say, all I wanted was some steak. <laughs> and you can. And you can hear a guy, the poor guy in the back, he, all I wanted was some steak. And they were throwing high chairs. They were throwing regular chairs, the oh. banquet tables, mm -hmm. all because the Golden Corral ran out of steak and somebody cut in line and got the last piece of steak. Kids, that's what happens when you cut in line. Yeah, so that and the cold cat was Come all on. I was like. Thank you, Leo. What are you whining about? Oh. <laughs> that's how every Minnesotan feels every single morning. We're going to take a break. We'll be back after this. Back in a moment. Welcome back, friends. You ready, Kendall? Uh-huh. It is time for the world's shortest segment. Right there. Today, Martha Stewart shares her tips on taking the perfect sexy selfie. First, project. Fabulous. Next, only conceal where needed. Being effortless is key. Now add a touch of gloss. Then say the magic phrase. Clé de peau. Clé de peau. Clé de peau. Oh. Clay de po. Clay de po. Clay de po. Martha Steamy swimming pool selfie went viral in 2020. It was the only good thing in 2020. We're going to take a break. Clay de po. And we'll be back with a surprise ending right after this. Say, Kendall. Clay. Clay de po. Clay. Welcome back. It is time for the surprise goodbye. We see the story the same time you do. Today, a lesson about closing windows when a winter storm is coming. A woman in Boston shared this video on TikTok saying the consequences of leaving your apartment window open during a blizzard. Look at, oh my goodness, I was reading, so I have to look at the video. Oh my goodness. What? Look at all that snow. Oh. She says her roommate stayed at her boyfriend's place and forgot that she left the window open. The other roommates knew something wasn't right when they could feel cold air coming from her room. Okay, well, you ninny, why didn't you go in there? Open the door. I mean, I know you're trying to, you know, respect somebody's privacy, but if you feel Arctic air coming from underneath the door, you should probably go in there. Well, like, because maybe they're dead. I don't know. Well, I mean, because, <laughs> okay, what I meant. <laughs> what I meant. Did you go, like, <laughs> they've been violently murdered. So, I mean. I watch a lot of Dateline, okay? That's like a telltale sign I know, but that you can feel Kendall, the way, you can feel the way some, that something's wrong. There's somewhere between 
they left the window open and they've been strangled to death. You I don't mean, there's know a, that. <laughs> there's a happy middle. I'm just saying. <laughs> Have a great day, kids. Tomorrow, HGTV star Clint Harp will join us to chat about the Minneapolis home and remodeling show. That's coming up tomorrow. <laughs> I'm just saying. Stay tuned for the news. Uh, if you're a kid watching that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you're doing it wrong. And make sure this cold air coming out of your roommate's door, check on it. We'll be back tomorrow.